So when you start a foundations type study, you would think that the basics would be kind of, eh, maybe the easier subjects, get the basics down, right? Mm -hmm. So these basic subjects for this study this week in our five-day devotional from Version, called The Foundations of Faith have not been basic. <laughs> Everything seems to be deep here. First of all, the first day we learned, what does it mean to be a Christian? That's not an easy answer. Right. Number two, who is God? Hello. Yeah, that's not a simple thing. That's a big one. Who's the Holy Spirit? Very misunderstood. Yes. And then what is sin? Jeez. I mean, today, maybe even a more misunderstood topic. Mm -hmm. Baptism. What is baptism? And what does it mean? And why does it matter? When you think of baptism... What comes to mind? If you said dunking someone in water, you're not wrong. Many churches have different approaches to baptism, but the ultimate purpose of baptism is to outwardly express an inward change. It is both a symbolic expression of faith and an act of obedience, surrender, and repentance, which is why it's the natural next step someone takes after they make a decision to believe in and follow Christ. Yeah, so it is simple. It's just simply a public confession of a private decision. Yeah. Which is not boasting of yourself. It is boasting in the Lord that you are now you now belong to him and wish to follow his ways. Doesn't mean we're going to be perfect, right? And it's an act of surrender and repentance, too. Right. Which was something I didn't always get. Right. That's not normally what you think of. You do think of uh, dunk them in water and then you go to heaven, but that's totally wrong. This public act allows us to identify with Christ's death and resurrection, repent from the way we used to live, and celebrate the new eternal life that we have because of Jesus' sacrifice. But even before Jesus came to earth, God symbolizes his ability to redeem people and make them new by having them pass through water. It happened to the Israelites as they crossed the Red Sea, and again when they crossed the Jordan River. It occurs to Naaman, the leprous commander in Second Kings, who was healed once he dips in the Jordan River seven times. And these are just a few examples. In each of these instances, God prophetically showcases his power and glory by using water to illustrate his ability to cleanse, heal, restore, and redeem. Mm -hmm. Man, that sounds good. When Jesus comes, he publicly confirms his commitment to God through baptism. And by doing so, he also foreshadows what will happen when he dies for humanity and arises from the dead three days later. So when we take part in baptism, we are choosing to live like Jesus by following his example. We are choosing to let God redeem and heal us by dying to our old selves and allowing him to raise us up to a new life. Baptism matters because it's something that Jesus exemplified and commanded his disciples to do. So as you process what baptism means to you, look for opportunities to bring others along with you. Talk to them about what it means to follow Jesus and consider inviting them to take part in the act of baptism. Hmm. That's good. Here are some questions you might want to ask. Do you believe you need Jesus? What does believing in Jesus mean to you? Do you believe that Jesus died for you and rose again? What does following Jesus look like? How have you asked God to forgive you for your past mistakes? Have you invited Jesus into your life? Here's the action step that the author lists. Take a few moments today to cultivate discussions about faith with other people who are in different places in their walk with God, and reflect on that. Then Moses reached out with his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. So the sons of Israel went through the midst of the sea on the dry land, and the waters were like a wall to them on their right and on their left. Exodus fourteen twenty one and 22. And at the foot of our devotional there on our blog at diggingdeeper.net, we also have 
a series of stories that illustrates what we talked about earlier in this lesson. The scriptures that back up those stories of Naaman. And finally, in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to follow all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Mm, So glad to have that. Lord, we thank you so much for this scripture. Thank you for this lesson this week. Thank you for the folks who put you version together and all the authors that make it possible to bring this word to people all around the world. Thank you for helping us understand what baptism is and why it matters. Lead us in your ways so that we may help others to know more about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm.